are righteous. You are right. You are worthy. You are worthy to be praised. To be praised and adored. You love justice. Full of mercy. Full of mercy. You are faithful. You Of mercy, full of mercy. You are faithful, you are faithful. perfect in every way. Perfect in Yahweh, Yahweh, Yahweh. Be lifted high. You alone are God. Sunday. Welcome to those of you that are streaming as well. We just want to thank God for another Sunday, another day where we're going to be blessed with the word. I want to thank God for what's going on at the boxing club as well. Not only the people that are coming in, but the food as well. The, the storage there is getting pretty full, so we want to thank God for providing for the people that are in need. So we thank God and thank all of you that have contributed. I just want to read a verse from Deuteronomy chapter 30 verse 15 it reads as follows see I have set before you today life and good death and evil in 
now I command you today to love the Lord your God, to walk in his ways, and to keep his commandments, his statutes, and his judgments, that you may live and multiply. And the Lord your God will bless you in the land which you go to possess. And then verse 19 says, I call heaven and earth as witness today against you, that I have set before you life and death, blessing and curse, and therefore choose life that both you and your descendants may live. We have the choice, church, to choose that what is good, to choose life and not death. And I was speaking to Pastor Chris about it this morning, something very similar, actually. We always have the choice whether to choose the positive or the negative. And sometimes in life, as we all know, certain challenges comes our way, certain trials and tribulations, but we still those times have the choice to choose good and to choose life and we need to draw the word of God which is the sword of the spirit to come against every challenge that we face in our lives so we just want to thank God that he's provided for us every challenge that comes our way God can relate he knows so we just want to thank him this morning for his mercy for his love and for his grace So as we prepare to worship, as we already have been, let's just prepare our hearts that the word may have an impact in our lives this morning. So we'll just quickly pray. Heavenly Father, we just want to once again thank you for this morning, Lord. We thank you for your word, which is sharper than any two-edged sword, Lord. We just want to give you the praise and the glory this morning. We thank you that you can overcome, Lord. Because you have overcome, we can overcome, Lord. We just want to give you this morning all the praise and the glory that you deserve, Lord. We pray for your servant who's preparing your word, Lord, that you continually bless him and soften our hearts, Lord, that we may come this morning with humility. We just want to give you the praise this morning as we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you, church, as we prepare to worship. rejoice. We choose to be present. We choose to bring ourselves present. Sometimes we can be geographically in a place, but we can be so far away. And that was the scriptures in Isaiah that the Lord came against. And he said, these people honor me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. So let not that not be what we do this morning let's bring ourselves present that no matter what is happening around our lives we would honor him we choose to honor him we choose to worship we choose to rejoice we suffer and we keep praising God it gives him glory and if God has been glorified in our lives can we not thank him we just want to thank him this morning I want to just read a simple couple of lines that really spoke to me and he says we learn so much more in times of sorrow than in times of joy consider these words by Robert Browning this is a poem It says, I walked a mile with pleasure. She chatted all the way, but left me none the wiser for all she had to say. 
I walked a mile with sorrow, and not a word said she, but oh, the things I learned from sorrow when sorrow walked with me. And I just want us to understand that, that we need to mourn with those who mourn and rejoice with those who rejoice. At all times, we will bless him and his praise shall be in our mouth. So it doesn't matter what's happening around our lives. We can find meaning in everything. And we need to ask God to give us the boldness to be strong, not the strength to suffer, but the strength to do bold things, even in that suffering. That's the promise that God has given us, that he will never leave us and he will never forsake us and he will be with us even unto the end of the age. So we want to thank God this morning that no matter what's going on in our lives, he's worthy to be praised and heaven is all around us. When we unite our hearts one with another and we gather in his name, he promises to be in the midst of us. Heaven is all around us and Jesus is near to those who are drawn near to him. Draw near to God and he'll draw near to us. So let's not just honor him with our lips and get used to just singing songs for the point of singing songs. It means nothing. Worship is our battle cry. Worship is offensive. It's not on the defense. When Jehoshaphat had a great army coming against him, he said, I do not know what to do. This great army is coming against me. All I know is that my eyes will be on you. And he called a great fast. He called people to gather together and he sent the worshipers out first and I encourage you church no matter whether you understand the song or know the song if you don't know the song sing a melody within your heart and God will honor you let's unite our hearts together because we want God now more than we've ever needed him we need him as the deer panteth for the water so pants my soul for the living God heavens all around come and move now come and do what you want to come and move how you want to come and make the old brand new come and move how you want to and do what only you can do we cannot but God can we can do all things all things through Christ who strengthens us and let it not be just habitual Christian words or jargon. Let it be the cry of the heart. Come, Lord. We need you more today than we've ever needed you in our lives. Come. Let the anointing that breaks the yoke be amongst us this morning. Ask, God. Ask and seek and knock and you will receive. Believe whatever you pray that it will be done and you will have it. These are the Master's words himself. You open my eyes to the unseen. Battles may rage, but we will not fear. 
will not fear. We will not fear. We know our victory is standing right here. Heavens all around. And heavens all around. Yeah. Heavens all around. Jesus is near. I can. I can see it now. I can see it now. Your kingdom is here. Heavens all around. Heavens. Heavens all around. Heavens all around.
Andrew shared, I was just so blessed, reminded me from the book of Nehemiah that the people had a willingness to work. And we announced last week about our food bank and it's already moving on so quickly. And I really want to thank God for all those involved and everyone as a church. We're, um, we're moving it on really, really quickly and people are, we've begun anyway, we're giving out so many food bags and we're having Enfield Council ringing us continually, actually, that people really are in need and it's not something that we don't know, but it's a privilege and an honour to be able to assist and be a part of that work. So I want to thank the church also. Um, we're having um, so many things going on yesterday at the boxing club, continually, uh, Pastor Julian, in fact, I'm going to invite Pastor Julian. Where is he? He can take the offering. Is Pastor Julian here? He's downstairs. Just to share a few words about the impact that we are actually having at the boxing club. And it's often unbeknown to us. There's so many young people who are, are struggling on the streets. And that's why the boxing club was actually established. It was many, many years ago when, when all these knife, uh, you know, the gang culture began. And unfortunately, it, has, it, it seems to be getting worse on the streets, but we are placed right in the center of it and having a, and a massive impact. And I know many of us on the church group received um, some news from Sandra yesterday about another young man who lost his life. And that's why we're here. The church remains in the earth, in the world, to make a difference. And we need to be a light and let our light shine. I wanted... Julian, to just say a few words about the boxing club. I was just sharing, Julian, about the impact that we're having, and often unbeknown to us about what you shared with me, but those two young boys, or that young yeah, boy. Yeah, yeah, sure. I was just sharing with Penny during the week that um, one of the young boys one day came into the club, and uh, he just came and shaking his head. He'd been in court that day uh, for three of his mates who were involved in an incident in uh, Enfield. Um, it was a stabbing, and unfortunately, they were the ones that uh, were being prosecuted. The person who got stabbed um, had life-threatening injuries, um, and I think it's, yeah, it's going to be hard for that person to recover from those injuries. But nonetheless, the, the boy that came in, um, he said they were devastated, they were crying, they couldn't handle you know, what's going to happen to them. They were sitting down, I think, for seven years. And then he shared at the end, he goes, and I was meant to be there that night. He goes, but it was on a Saturday night, but I came training. And I was so tired, I said to him, no, I'm, I can't come. I'm just knackered from training that day. And uh, I couldn't believe it when he said that, because unbeknownst to us, obviously, they come in, they're training. But that would have been another life that would have been sent down for how many years, just because he would have been implicated with his friends for what happened that night. So, you know, th there's so many testimonies. Like We all experienced Andrew, Dominic. All there, um, Deacon John and, and Beck and with Archbishop as well. All what's going on, what we experience and what we see, we get glimpses sometimes of just what the club is doing because half the time you don't know. And they're not always telling you what's going on, but you know, that's just one, one glimpse of how it's saving lives, changing lives, and impacting lives in a positive way. Oh, God Praise God. Praise God. Thank you, Julian. And we were just saying with the worship team, this morning we were actually bigging Julian up behind his back, but I'll do it from the pulpit, that he's got a really calm manner, and it really, really helps. So thank God for his life also. And on another note, we've got a book here that we're, we have at the back there. There's some books, Archbishop's book is there, some CDs, and this is a book that Pastor Beck wrote called The Journey, and it's about his life. If everyone wants to purchase one of these, it's at the back there, and the proceeds will be going to break out for a, the youth project that we have here. So we want to give thanks for Pastor Beck's life and who, all that he has been to this church also. Let's give the Lord a clap offering. As we take our offering this morning, may you truly be blessed as you give. God bless you.
My soul needs a friend, so I run to the Father again and again and again and again. Oh, 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 oh. You saw my condition, had a plan from the My soul needs a friend, so I run to the Father again and again and again and again. I run to the Father, I fall into grace. I'm done with the hiding, no reason to wait. My heart needs a surgeon, my soul needs a friend, so I run to the Father again and again.
the word this morning. Let your souls be released. Release to the Lord. Hallelujah is the language of heaven. Let's unite with the angelic beings this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. to enter in to worship you and we pray for the offering this morning for our children for Sunday school and for the word that will be ministered we give you the preeminence and glory as the church say amen let's invite Archbishop to share the word this morning thank you God bless you welcome amen you can give each other a wave offering, turn around, greet each other. Just look around you, see who's next to you, who's in the house. Praise the Lord, the woman and welcome His Eminence Archbishop Fring Pong. You're welcome. Let's give a clap offering. And whoever is here for the first time, you're welcome. God bless you. It's good to have you here. And we've got some oil to anoint, so it's good. Have you had a good week? Yes. Are you blessed? And highly favoured. God bless you, amen. Good to see you all today. Radiating faces. Praise God, amen. Actually, the senior pastor touched upon the subject for the theme for the message today. It's, uh, the subject is the power of praise. Amen. You want to have a breakthrough? There's a principle, there's a mechanism to, ha- to bring that breakthrough about. Praise the Lord. Uh, so I just want to look at a few verses and then go over and expound upon it. Just enrich us with the Word of God. It's not about a person. It's about what God is doing in our lives. So I want to lay down a foundation. Psalm three, 33 verse 1 reads as follows. It says, uh, Rejoice in the Lord, O you righteous, for praise from the upright is beautiful. Praise the Lord with the heart. Make melody to him with an instrument of ten strings. Sing to him a new song Play skillfully with a shout of joy. Have you done that today? Yes. Amen. Praise God. Rejoice in the Lord, O you righteous. Uh, how do we define what righteous is? Righteous is someone who has an attitude that wants to live right. No one's perfect. We all have scaffolding around us. Just picture in your mind's eye. We have scaffolding. We're under construction. There's debris falling out coming from us. So people around us need to watch sometimes when they come around the construction area of our lives because they can get hurt. We need those helmets, you know, it says it's a working site. So people come around us, we need to be careful. Amen, when you go around people, you know, because things happen. So praise God. So we, we want to have a righteous attitude this, this morning. And in fact, you know, we, people want to know God. They want a relationship with God. But often they want the outcome, but they don't want the process to build that relationship up. And life is about relationships, because the Lord said, seek ye first, what? The kingdom of God, and and then what happens? Everything else is added unto us, unto you. So this is the attitude we need to have. So 
you work with God. Uh, church is not a performance. We're not here, I'm not here to clown around, even though I sometimes may do, you may think I do, but I'm not here to clown. I'm here to get, bring you into, into a place, a space where you can encounter your creator. That's what it's, it's really all, around, all about. In fact, the Hebrew has different words used for worship, which are translated in the, in the singular word worship, but there's different aspects of worship, how we can express our connection, our love, our, 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 our desire to, to, to grow in God. And I want to just speak about them for a few moments. There's seven words, and they're, they're different areas of the scripture. In fact, uh, there's a word which, which is a tauda, which means a sacrificial type of praise. Now, when you praise God through sacrifice, I wish I'm speaking to someone. Don't look at me with blank faces. You worship God with sacrifice. You give over to God. It's not just about taking, as one of the presidents of the United States says, it's not what the, your country can do for you, but what you can do for your country. It's not just what God can do for us, but what can we do for God? We can help make this world a better place if we are Christ-centered, if we are godly-centered. We can make this world a better place. We can bring joy into someone's life. And praise is, is an expression of sound, either in, through an instrument or through words we speak. But there's also praise in silence, because sometimes our silent prayer, be still, means surrender, know that he's God, speaks louder sometimes than words. Because we give him the space, the room in our lives to express him. So through us, we become transparent. You see this candle on this table here? Yeah, you see the candle? It's got glass around it. It's transparent. So you not only see what's around it, you see what's within the glass. And that's how we should become. When we speak about God, we must reflect this type of, of attitude that we must become transparent. And it's not all about us, but it's about him. You know, John the Baptist represented the law, which represents the old man. We can either be the old man or the new man. He made a, a profound statement in John chapter 3, verse 30. This is what John said, and this is the attitude, and this should characterize, and this should be embodied within a believer's life. This is John chapter 3, verse 30. It says this, he must, and what must I do? You want power, you want God's presence. And I want to take a little journey to show you how you can capture God within your life, and he cannot get away from you when you have an attitude. Not that God you can get away from God because God fuels all things. As I often say, the whole creation, uh, God permeates everything. So it's not he's moving in us, we're moving in him. Because he's at the back of the hall, at the same time he's at the front of the hall. So when I go from here to there, he's there. If I stand in here, he's here. I cannot get away from God. But his manifest presence, this is what we're speaking about. They can manifest in our lives and people can see us and see the evidence of God's presence in our lives through our attitude, through our lifestyle. Come on. So I want to take a little journey. So uh, Tauda means uh, a sacrificial praise. Psalm 50 verse 15 said this. Watch this. It said this. Uh, uh, Call upon me in the day, uh, 15, 50, uh, 50, 50. Call me on, on in the day of trouble. I will deliver you, and you should glorify me. Call upon me. Calling, in a sense, is the type when, when we're praying. It's a communication with God. It's a sound going up to God. And then verse twenty-three of the same psalm says this: Psalm fifty, verse twenty-three. Sorry. Okay, let's move on if we got there. 2 Chronicles chapter 20, 2 Chronicles chapter 20, verse 21, said this. And when he had consulted with the people, this is what the senior pastor was sharing earlier, he appointed those who would, sh who would sing to the Lord and who should praise the beauty of holiness as they went out before the army and were saying, praise the Lord for his mercy in Jaws forever praise god and in the face of adversity god calls us to praise even before the outcome god is saying to us we need to praise in spite we need to praise in spite whatever the outcomes are we need to praise there's power in sound there's power in words in fact a number of years ago how many years ago i think uh is janet here where's janet janet how many years did you do that experiment 12, 13 years ago, we did a kind of experiment based on sound. I gave a message about the, the, the sound, the, uh, how's the, the vibrations in, in, that sound gives out, the frequencies and things like this, positive or negative. 
And I gave a talk about that. And then Janet went and did an experiment that I discussed through the sermon, through the message. And it was amazing. It was profound. The outcomes were really profound. But it was scientific to show that how you speak has a good impact or a negative impact in people's lives. And in fact, I asked the deacons to bring it down. It's, it's, can you just, Deacon John, just bring you the experiment we did. I still have it here, the experiment we did 12, 13 years ago. This is actually Janet's husband, Deacon John. If you put that on there, yes? I just want to show you something because it's important that we grasp what we're talking about and, and embrace and internalize and understand what we're saying so we know the power of what we speak. Then we then we'll be more conscientious how we speak and what we say in relation to the words we say. And I just, we, was the experiment was this, is that this was done in scientific conditions and Janet went back home and she copied the experiment and she put in one side, she put three jars of water with rice in them the same type of jars, the same from the same source of water, is that correct? Same rice, and she put them in different parts of the house. Is it room or house, where did you put them? In the same room, in the same room different places. And every day for 30 days, she was going to each one and saying a word over, over, over a number of these. For, the, for one of them, she was going up to it and saying, I love you. The other one, she was saying, I hate you the vibration of what hate brings the discord about. And once she was not speaking to, she, she ignored. And this was scientifically tested outside of what we just did, or what Janet did. And basically, by after 30 days, the one she said, I love you, remained crystal clear. The one she said, I hate you, got murky. And the one she ignored became murky, because silence, sometimes ignoring someone is, is is based passive aggressive it can have a negative impact and this is over 13 years and this has remained clear these are still in their condition the reason i'm saying is because we often take for granted what we are saying and even when we speak over our lives if we're negative about ourselves and positive uh, and, and pessimistic then we have we that we become the outcome of our thoughts and what we say and the reason I'm sharing this today is the fact that I was speaking to Deacon Dominic yesterday, that, when was it, yesterday, and we were discussing about the power of words. And Do Deacon Dominic said, you know, Ikea did an experiment based on words. I said, really? I said, well, send it to me. And he actually sent me the little clip that Ikea, now this is a big company, you know, multi-million or billion company, and they actually used, uh, the, the, uh, uh, did an experiment based on sound and how it can have a negative or positive effect on people in relation to bullying, yeah? And it's along the lines of what we say here, because this is water, but we are made of 66 plus percent of water. And when you speak, a vibration goes through you. If it's negative, you're gonna have a negative impact. If it's positive, it's gonna be a positive outcome. Praise God. So I wanna show the little video. I'm not sure, because we're streaming, this will be permitted because of copyright reasons, but we'll soon be, so people watching live stream, if it's cut off, you know it's a copyright infringement. But I wanna show you what IKEA did, and we'll come back to you if you lose us for the next few moments, unless they block us completely. So let's just put it on, let's put it on the, on the, on the overhead and see what happens. This is IKEA, put it out, just watch this. Thank you, thank you. Praise Now this is not, this is not, not set up. IKEA didn't do it for our purposes. <laughs> but I'm saying to you, this is important. We've been speaking about this for many years. The word of God is, is ahead of time. You know, we're, we cannot catch up with the word. God spoke about this from the beginning of creation, about the power of words, vibration. I mean, creation came about through vibration, the word. God didn't write, let there be light. He said... Something happens. And when we speak, we, bring, we create things. We create good things and bad things. So be careful what you are saying even about yourself. When you start using the word, I can't, you've already disqualified yourself. You're right. If you say you can't, you're right. You're not going to. But if you say, I can, and you do your best to facilitate that, you'll surprise yourself what you can achieve and what you can, how, how you can move on and overcome whatever challenges you're facing in your lives. Praise God. So just be mindful of these things. You know, Jesus said about the power of word. The centurion went to Jesus and said to him, he said to him, just say the word. You don't need to come to my, my house. Your vibration of your word will change things. 
I can go even deep on a different layer, but I'm not going to do it this morning because it's, it's too deep and perhaps it'll go over people's heads about even speaking about someone behind their back will have a negative effect on the person speaking at the same time. I wish I'm speaking to someone. These are serious, this is serious business. You know, the, the problem is with religion. People are used to going to a church, 2.4 sermon, 50-minute sermon, going back home, oh, I've done a religious act. It's not a religious act, it's about religious relationship. Amen. It's about knowing your destiny, knowing your purpose. That's what the church is about, to make you, to fulfill your purpose, make you what you should be. Yeah, praise God. So I want to take a journey through the, these different aspects of, of, of praise, because praise involves how we speak and vibrations. And even in our silence, there's still vibration going out. So I said, Tauda means sacrificial prayer. Yada means raising your hands in prayer. You can lift your hands and give glory, give a shout to the Lord, give praise to God. There's another word, Barak, means a quiet silence type prayer, which you're kneeling down. Your, your physical position shows your expression to God. You're surrendering. You're giving God the glory. Halal is a soul worship. is a deep spiritual praise and worship. There's a vibration within your soul and within your spirit. Now, now the thing is that the, many people, we're made of, we, we, we're tripartite. Because we reflect the Creator. He's God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We're tripartite. We're body, soul, and spirit. But oftentimes, we only function on the, on the level of, of, the, of, the, of the body and the soul and not the spirit. So we're either instinctive a body or we're soulish, emotional. But God wants us to break through the instinctive and, and emotional and become spiritual. So our prayers need to be spiritual, not just saying words for the sake without having the connection with the words we're saying. So when you say something, you mean what you say, there's power in that. Yeah? Okay. So we need to be, we need to be spiritual. And spiritual requires rationale and requires a mind, God centeredness in our minds. Yeah? Okay. You'll get, you'll get this. You'll get this. If you, if you work it, you'll get, understand what I'm saying. So it's not just words. It's a way it becomes a way of life. That you mean what you say and say what you mean. Not just talk for the sake of just making a sound, but mean because there's power. You can release a negative. If a nuclear weapon, a nuclear bomb, if, you, if, if it explodes, it's going to have a devastating effect in the world. You know, and we have greater weapon in our mouths, our tongues. That word can go out and execute that which it's sent out to do, can be distracted, can destroy, or can help build up, or can or help encourage, or motivate. Oh, I wish I'm speaking to someone. Zama is, is a type of worship that you're using your string instrument to play, and the greatest string instrument you have is your heart, really. You want to you lift up and praise. And there's another uh, word, is te tehila, which means uh, just singing along, singing along with unity, corporate prayer, prayer together. And there's another form of worship, which is Shabbat, which means to shout. Shout, give a, a shout offering, a praise offering. And that's the kind of attitude we need to have, that mindset that we need to imp apply all these elements of worship and prayer when we are connecting with God. And then you have the dance. I dance like David dance in the spirit and things like this. So this, we, we, we give our, our whole being over to God. Can we do that? This is, it makes a difference. And it's not having the inhibitions thinking, what are people going to think about me? Is saying, look, I want to just give glory to God. It doesn't matter what people say about me or think about me. I want to have a breakthrough in God. Because that's what matters at the end, praise God. So I want to take a, a page, a leaf from the life of Jehoshaphat that the senior pastor shared. She was sharing my message this morning in unity and prayer. God bless you. And I want to draw some principles out. How you, what, what you can put into place to have your victory, to have your breakthrough in God and in your lives, okay? And it all, it all comes down to you and your faith in God. So I want to just look at Chronicles chapter 20, verse 1. I want to just draw a few verses, expound upon them, and I want to conclude, if, I, if I've overlooked it, remind me, I want to conclude how you can take God prisoner. Okay? So if I've overlooked it, remind me, please, Okay? Okay, how you can keep God, and he cannot, by his own law, he cannot escape you. Amen. <laughs> he cannot leave you. He says, I never leave you nor forsake you, but sometimes we reject. So that's why in John, in Revelation chapter 3, 20, says, I stand at the door and knock. Why? Because he's outside. 
We don't want him outside. We want him central in our lives. So in, Jehosh in Jehoshaphat's time, which was 8th century Seoul BC, we, he, had, he had many adversities, many uh, foes, a great opposition against his kingdom, against his reign. He reigned for 25 years. Now, in, in Chronicles 20, 21, there's a situation arises that manifests that he's helpless to deal with. Yeah? People of the area that they they're occupying want to come and take over and, and destroy them and take, get rid of them. So we read in verse 1, it said, It happened after this that the people of Moab and the people of Ammon and others with, the, uh, with them besides the Ammonites came to battle against Jehoshaphat. Okay? Uh, then some came and told Jehoshaphat, saying, A great multitude is coming against you from beyond the sea, from Syria, and they are in Haz uh, Hazazon, Tamar, which is in En Gedi. So I want to just take a first principle. Okay, first principle. What happens when we have adversity coming against our life? What can we draw from the life of Jehoshaphat? Uh, you know, these, 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 these kingdoms or these peoples are representing many things in our lives. They're not sort of physical uh, opponents. It could be spiritual things that we're encountering in our mind, emotional things that come in against us. What do we do? So we look at Jehoshaphat, what he does, how he responds to this. The first thing he does is seek the Lord. The first thing, first principle. When you have whatever mindset, you have a problem, you have a situation, and I always call problems opportunities because they're stepping stones to get you closer to where you need to be. So when you have a, something that you, is challenging and adversity that you feel is insurmountable, the first thing you do is you've got to seek the Lord. The scripture says, seek the Lord why he may be found. And God wants you to find that the moment you begin to seek him, that's when he reveals himself to you. But seek him in a special way from the depth of your heart. Principle one, seek the Lord. The second thing he does, he unites people together to come into prayer. Yeah? When you come in unity, you pray in one accord, things begin to happen. So we come, that's why the church gathering is very important. The assembling together is very important because we stand in the gut for each other. It, it's not necessary for myself to know your issue. It's not necessary for me to know your personal battle. Because there's some battles that we're fighting that no one knows about. My, my role is to stand in the gut and pray. If God knows that, it's not important whether, whether I know it or not. It's more important that God knows it and I'm standing in unity with you for your breakthrough as you stand in unity for me for my breakthrough. But we are selfish people. All we want is our selfish breakthrough and we neglect and we, we ignore and other people's journey and we're thinking it's all about me, myself and I, the unholy trinity. So second principle, first principle, seek God. Second principle, unite. In Acts of the Apostles, the Lord told them, well, in, 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 in Luke and the Gospel, says, when he ascends, he says, you tarry in Jerusalem. Tarry in Jerusalem. Till you are empowered, till you receive the promise of my Father from above, and empowered with the Holy Spirit. The Greek word, to be dressed with the Holy Spirit. You sit until you're dressed and power in where? In Jerusalem. And in Acts chapter 2, verse 1, they were all together, we're told, in one accord, united. We need to be united. We need to see through the eyes of Christ. If we're looking through our individual's eyes at outside in the world, we're going to miss the point. We need to be united. The central point, the center point is Christ, his purpose, his will, his desire for our lives and for the world. So in Acts chapter 2, verse 1, it says this, When the day of Pentecost had fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. They were in the upper room. You're in the upper room now. We are united. We should be united. One accord in one place. And verse 2 said this. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind. And it filled the whole house where they were sitting. So first it comes in. It fills the surroundings. Yeah. But they're united. And as a result, the outcome of that unity was that heaven was open and the anointing flowed where in, it filled the place they were, they were habitating, praise God. And then verse 3, watch this. It says, And then appeared to them divided tongues as of fire, and one sat upon each of them, and verse 4, and they were all what? Filled with the whole. What does unity do? Unity fills, encourages, 
draws, is a magnet to draw the presence of God in our lives. And it filled the room first, but then it filled them and they began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. See, often we want to say what we want to say, but when God comes in your life, you're going to say what he wants to say. Because what he says is more important than what I want to say. Yeah, praise God. We have principle number one is seek the Lord. Principle number two is be united in your prayer, in your outlook, and so forth. Praise God. Principle number three, acknowledge. Read the whole chapter because of time. I just want to just go over it. So I want to come to a particular place. Principle number three. Acknowledge that we are helpless. But I'm in control. Acknowledge without him. John tells us in chapter 15, verse 5, Jesus says, says to them, I am the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me, and I in him bears much fruit, for without me you can do. He says, Without me, you can do nothing. I got the Greek out of my system. <laughs> Without me, you can think. You can do nothing. We're help. We think we're in control. The evidence the past few years shows clearly no one is in control. Come on. No one, no one was in control. Everything was cancelled. Everything was changed over a blink of an eye. The world changed overnight and there was no one in control. You couldn't even leave your houses. You couldn't even drive your car sometimes. Realise we're helpless. And that's when God really manifests. That's, that's his cue to enter the scene, the situation of our lives. When you know you're, even in your business, even in your workplace, even in your, wherever you are in your lives, acknowledge God has to be present there to make it, to make it, of, make value, validate it, and make your value, praise God. Principle. Then he's praying, but then as a result of all these prayers, we discover that, um, uh, in, in verse 14, uh, there's a spokesman for God appears. Yeah? The spokesman for not just anyone, a spokesman filled with the Spirit of God appears to speak into Jehoshaphat's and Israel's situation. You need a spokesman of God to speak into your situation. In other words, principle number four, connect to the right people. Because if you connect to the wrong people, they'll make your problem worse. Come on, I wish I'm speaking to someone. In verse, in verse uh, this is um, Chronicles chapter 20, uh, verse 14. Then the Spirit of the Lord came upon uh, Jahaziel, uh, the son of Zechariah, the son of Benaniah, the son of Jael, the son of Mataniah, the uh, Levi, of the sons of Asaph in the midst of the assembly. He had, a, he had a pedigree, he had a, he had a, a divine uh, a lineage that he, he was drawing from. And each one of these names represents something. Okay? And so, so we, 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 we need to connect to the right people who will speak the right things into our lives to solve the problem. If you, had a, if you have a headache, or you've got a, an ailment, you don't go to the car mechanic. But, 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 you know, it's amusing, but that's what we do with our spiritual lives. We go to Job blogs who's not qualified to speak in our lives, and we get trying to get counsel from them, and they make the things worse. Just because they, the, the car mechanic can read the medical book, but he's not a doctor. Yeah? So what I'm saying is that you need to be with the right people who God qualifies to be in your lives. And these are the people filled with the Spirit. Then the Spirit of the Lord came upon uh, Jehazel. Praise the Lord. Uh, and that's the attitude we need to have. So we need to be careful who we're connecting to will determine how we can progress and how we can move forward. I wish I'm speaking to someone. Praise the Lord. Principle five, surrender to God. Amen. God speaks to us. Surrender, say, not my will, thy will be done. Jesus himself, the son of God, was in Gethsemane. Come on, I wish I'm speaking to someone. He was the son of God. Holy without sin. 
he's in a garden of Gethsemane. His first season was about to unfold before his very, his very life. He's going to be betrayed, given over to, to, to a Gentile nation. He's going to be beaten and crucified. He can't, psychology, his psychology has often said, cannot understand this because life cannot understand death. God, without sin, if you're sinless, you cannot understand the, 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 the mechanism of death. And yet he's in the garden. He's praying to his father. He says, Father, if it's possible, take this cup away from me. And then he concludes by saying, not my will, thy will be done. And sometimes there are journeys we need to go through because there's a lesson in those journeys to strengthen us and make us better for it. So we need to follow the leading where God wants to take us, where God wants to lead us and follow his leading. It might not be pleasant. It may not be the best holiday resorts, but it's where God wants you to be. And that's what's important. As long as he's with us, we're going to, he's going to get us through that. Praise God. Amen. Principle 6. Uh, verse 20. This is Chronicles... Uh, Chapter 20, this is 2 Chronicles 20, verse 20. It says this. So they rose early in the morning and went out into the wilderness of Tekoa. And as they went out, Jehoshaphat stood and said, Hear me, O Judah, and you inhabitants of Jerusalem. Believe in the Lord your God, and you shall be established. Believe his prophets, and you shall prosper. Faith. We walk by faith. This 2 Chronicles chapter, 2 Corinthians chapter 2 verse 7, chapter 5 verse 7 says this. We walk by faith, going to quickly over the overhead, uh, for we walk by faith and not by sight. Yeah? So have all these prints, if you just make a note of these prints, if you don't, if you, if you don't get it now, you can see it on the, on the, on the, on the archives and make a, a a note of these principles and apply them into your life because the word of God is scientific the same way with the power of the word, how these, this water impacted this water. The power of the word impacted the IKEA experiment and many other experiments I could use as examples. There's power. If you follow these processes, you're going to have the outcome. But if you, do, if you listen to this and do something completely different, you're going to have a different outcome. So th there's no surprises with these different things. Yeah? And so, so, so can someone tell me what's the first principle? Seek the Lord. What's the second principle? What's the third principle? Helpless. The fourth principle. The fifth principle. The sixth principle. Faith. The seventh principle. <laughs> Not yet. <laughs> Culmination. Okay, the seventh principle is what we began with, praise. Psalm 22, verse 3. Let me, let, me, let me put it, let me begin from verse 1, because this is Psalm the Lord quoted on the cross of Calvary. He said, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why are you so far from helping me and from the words of my groan? Sometimes we feel like this. We're in a situation where we're helpless, we're hopeless, we can't not see a way through, a way forward, and we don't know what's happening. We think God has abandoned us, and we're in a dark place of despair. But let me tell you, in that dark place, God is more real there than any other time in your life. When you felt you had it all together, it was you. But when you know you haven't got it all together, you know it's him. Watch this, verse 2. Oh my God, I cry in the daytime, but you do not hear. And in the night season, and I'm not silent. I'm just calling to you all the time. But it seems you're, you, you've, you've, it seems uh, there's an empty space. Yeah? God does his great work in empty spaces. And verse 3, this is the verse I want to come to. This is the crunch. This is the thing. This is, this is the crunch. This is the, what I said there. What did I say earlier to remind me? How you can lock God in. And he has to abide by his rules. He says, but you, he says, are holy, enthroned in the praises of Israel. Okay? But you are holy, enthroned in the praises of Israel. His throne is in your praise. When you're praising God, his throne is established in your praise, in your praise, in your shout, in your calling out to God. Come on. 
but you are wholly enthroned in the praise of Israel. The, 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 word, the word here for enthroned is the Hebrew word yash, uh, yashab, which means to dwell, to, to, to make your abode in, okay? To dwell in, to remain, to remain in that place. He remains in the praises of his people. Oh, you're going to get this. You're going to get. So when you're praising from the depth of your heart with a righteous attitude, mind that you really want God from the depth of your heart, God cannot. God is present in you. Yeah. So you don't need to ask for anything. Just praise Him, and everything the out the byproduct of of whatever you need manifests because you're praising Him because He inhabits you. He's with you. He cannot leave you. As long as you're praising, God cannot get away from you. Whatever situation you are, just lift the it doesn't. God doesn't care your voice quality. He doesn't want you to be a Pavarotti or, or one of these great superstar singers. He doesn't care. It's not about those songs. It's about the attitude of the heart. God doesn't just want you to sing in tune. He wants you to walk in tune. He wants you to walk according to his precepts and statutes and so he can be glorified through your life. Your, 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 whole, your whole makeup is there to give glory to God. Yeah, praise God. And when you're praising him, he cannot, he's there present within you. Yeah, praise the Lord from the depth of your heart. So don't neglect. You know when we come in the church and we begin to praise, don't, don't be self-conscious. Don't, don't, don't just lock it in. Just be free in God. This is a place, a space to just worship and lift the Lord up, praise God. Irrespective of what you are going through. Yeah? Come on. So we see Jehoshaphat uses these principles to bring the outcome. And what happens in their praise, This we got, we're going to, to, um, to verse 22, 2 Chronicles chapter 20, verse 22. And when they began to sing and to praise, okay, come on, the Lord set ambushes against the people of Ammon. God fights your battle for you. All you do is praise, and whatever's worrying you, whatever's giving you anxiety, whatever's making you fearful, whatever's concerning you, God is dealing with the problem as you're praising. He's dealing with the theaters around your lives. And, and he says, uh, an ambush, uh, uh, and then he goes to say, uh, uh, and, uh, who had come against Judah, and they were defeated. So you're going to bring your problems down. You want to deal with the situation, just keep praising him, and God will show you the way. He will deal with it for you and help you have that breakthrough, that empowerment, praise God. And now, now so, so Jehoshaphat used these principles, but it's not, it's, not, it's not just exclusively for Jehoshaphat. All the prophets and patriarchs used the same principles in and through their lives and had the breakthrough, even to David. The second king of Israel, he used praise and praise and singing and worship. He used to play the, the guitar. He was the, he was the rock guitarist of his day. <laughs> Come on. He had a ten-string uh, uh, harp that he was playing for soul to calm his spirit. Praise the Lord. And even doesn't, it's not only confined in the Old Testament. We see the examples in the New Testament. Look at the example. I just want to conclude in a few, in Acts chapter 16 with, with Paul and, Sil and Silas. Very quickly, we're going to finish in the next few moments. Paul and Silas, they were preaching the gospel. They came to an area. There was a girl, a slave girl, demon possessed, was like a fortune teller for her master. And um, she was confessing. You read the whole chapter when you go home. That Paul was servants of the Most High God. She was repeating and repeating until Paul got fed up with her. He, she was saying the right thing, but he kept repeating, repeating. He, just, he wanted to quieten her down, you know? And so he, 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 he cast the demon out of her. And, the, and her owner was offended because he lost his livelihood because she was telling people's fortunes and now she, he would lose his livelihood. So he, he took him to the council, to the government of the time, and they arrested him and put him in prison. With Silas, and not before they put him in prison, they beat him, they whipped him. We'd, we'd give up a long time before that, before the whippings, they would just say, oh, No problem, let's quiet. But he carried on, held to his conviction. And in that beating, he was beaten, he was, he was in pain, he was in agony, he was wounded with Silas in the prison, in the darkness of the prison. What does he do? He doesn't give up, he lifts a song, he lives a praise. Come on, I wish I'm speaking to someone. In the 12th hour, Acts chapter 16, verse 25. He, it wasn't the out. He didn't get through it and praise God. He praised God before he even knew he can get through it. 
But we want the outcome before we praise God, and we're not, we're not prepared to praise God in the journey. And that's where the, that's where the empowerment happens. That's where the victory happens in the journey, praise God. You, you, you know it, your prayer closet is where everything happens, your secret place. You see, that's a parallel. Truth is parallel. Someone who's performing, a singer, their preparation in their, in their studio before they, before they perform to the public is the preparation that qualifies the performer. An athlete, before they compete in a, in, in a competition, is the, is, the, is the gymnasium, is the stadium of preparation that brings that. You see the evidence of what happens in the field, what, what happened in the, in the preparation. Come on. It's your preparation that brings the outcome. If you want to play a musical instrument, Deacon John didn't just stand there practice. You practice somewhere else. Did you learn on the job? <laughs> yeah, he <you> did. <laughs> You practice. You've got to practice. When I was in music, I used to practice. People think, is that real? Yes, it was real. I used to practice about five hours a day. Seriously. I used to, five hours, I used to have a timetable every day, five days a week. I used to practice. I used to do different routines, scales. I knew the guitar back up with my eyes closed back to front. I knew every note, every chord, every permutation. Every, and, then, and then I did my performance uh, diploma, which I, I qualified London School. London School of Music, and so and and the Associate Board of Royal Schools of Music did all their qualifications. It didn't just it didn't just turn up one day with the guitar. You know, can I do the exam? <laughs> yeah, and so it shows what you do is revealed in the field. But unless you're in your closet in the preparation, you won't see any outcome. People and people will be the people will be the, the ones who determine how you've prepared. Yeah. So if you want to do something it's, and you're saying, I'm doing this, but you're not doing it, you cannot fool people because it will come out on, in the arena. And that's what it's about. It's about we praise, we prepare, we have that relationship, we praise the Lord, and we see the outcomes of these things, praise the Lord. So he, he, he's enthroned in your praises. When you get that concept in your mind, you know when I'm singing praise the Lord or hallelujah, you know God is enthroned in that, in that vibration. God is there with you. And that's where you move from there. That's where you can move forward and have the greatest breakthroughs and greatest victories in God. Praise the Lord. Amen. Let me go back to Psalm 33, verse 1, before we finish today. Rejoice in the Lord, O you righteous, for praise from the upright is beautiful. You want to be beautiful? You want to look beautiful to God? Praise Him. Amen. Let's stand together. Praise the Lord. I, th I thank God that, you know, God gives us these, these little examples like the water or the, or the video we saw with Ikea and things. It's good because it brings the reality that what God is saying, even the world is trying to use that to express, explain things. So you, with your words, season your words with the salt of the word of God, of the, of the, of the presence of the spirit of God. Amen. I want to invite his eminence to join me. Hallelujah. Before we come to the communion. I pray you receive today. And I pray you go away and apply this. I pray so you can sing going home. You can dance going home. And be careful the music you listen to. You know, uh, there's some music, it's a discord. It conflicts with your spirit. And, and it brings a bad spiritual presence. You need to be careful what you listen to as well. People just think, oh, it's, it's just, just entertainment. It's not, there's something more to it. You've got to be careful, yeah? And we want to pray for our young people because they listen to some distorted things, dark things, and we need to pray for them. Amen. I just ask his owners to just say a few words and pray for Hallelujah. us. Hallelujah. This is the Valentine message. <laughs> it's, it's good. So we are now val Valentine's. God is good. Hallelujah. And uh, I, when I was coming, I was contemplating about uh, Jesus uh, meeting uh, Simon for the first time, asking him to uh, preach about, on, his, uh, boat, on his boat. And 
when he asked him, can you lunch? He said, no, we have talked all the night. But by your word, we will lunch it. Amen. And when they got the great catch, what I learned was that they left everything. Yes. Left everything to go and follow Jesus. And that is what a sacrificial uh, blessing that came upon their life. And today, as the message has come, you know, you know we, yeah, we are fighting a, a warfare, a very great warfare. But the fight is not ours, it's Christ. He has already won for us. He has finished on the cross. So we always have to celebrate, hallelujah, and thank God. Nobody can just celebrate with you. You know who you are. In my hometown in Ghana, in Ashanti region, there, are, there were two families. And one of the families was an, a seven-day Adventist. And the other family were butchers. They killed goats and everything. But what I learned was that these butchers' children, every stolen goat or sheep in the town, they were lying to them. But when anything good is coming, they say, oh, the, the, the seven-day Adventist family. You know, so I learned from that that because they made Jesus their life, their, their source and everything, every good and everything was coming to them. What means uh, 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 saying to them, but the one who was away from Christ, every evil thing that comes in. And I have seen the, the diminishing of that family. Nothing good came from them. But the one who aligned himself with Christ, every good thing came from them. Now the children are in America, everywhere, thanking God for their lives. So today, the message has come for you to praise God and celebrate him because he has already won the victory for you. And today, people are celebrating Valentine. But today is the best Valentine time. Are you not happy? Yes. Today, you know, yesterday, last week I came, I didn't have a car, I came with a bus. This morning I said, I will come early. Because the buses are all my cars. <laughs> you know, they have my name written on it, register my name. So I just did everything. I said I have to come and join the praise and everything. Yeah. So nothing can push me back. And the message uh, the first pastor preached um, about Deuteronomy 13 hit me. I like that message. So I said before you, life and what? Death. So it's a choice today for you to be happy. There may be challenges in, 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 on your way, but victory is yours. Because the same thing happened to uh, Jehoshaphat. And I thank God. Every time I see uh, uh, Gary, you know, I'm happy. I've been with Gary for almost 20 years. But you see the joy that Gary holds. When I used to go to St. Thomas, he's the first person that makes me happy. And even when I'm coming to church every day, he will hug me and everything. Everything. I'm happy. The same thing that you have to be happy. Because Christ is going through. There may be challenges. Things are happening. It doesn't mean that you don't go through adversities. You have to go through it. And as Archbishop said, when you are in adversity, that's where Jesus is. He is not, you are not alone. And that's why the Bible says, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For that I with me. God bless you and be strong. This is your Valentine Day. Amen. Valentine Day. When peace like a river attended my way, when sorrow like seas billows roll, whatever my Lord that has taught me to say, it is well. It is well with my soul. It is well. It is with my soul. With my soul. It is well. It is well with my soul. Whatever situation we are going through, it is well with our soul. In Jesus' name, amen. So praise the Lord. God bless you, your eminence. We're going to have our time of communion. If Deacon, don't we'll take that. If you have your communion cups with you.
praise God. We just have some oil to anoint. We'll do this first now, then we'll do the communion. Father, we anoint this oil, we consecrate yes, this oil, Father, yes, in your name. That this oil in the Old Testament will use to consecrate and ordain priests, kings, and prophets. We pray that whoever comes in contact with this oil, Lord, will be feel your impact, your presence in their life. Bring healing, bring joy, bring peace in the name of Jesus. Just lift this up to you now. Praise the Lord in the name of Jesus. Praise God. Amen. 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 Praise Amen. the Lord. And as they were eating, Jesus took bread, blessed, broken, and gave to the disciples and said, Take it, this is my body. Then he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for many for the remission of sins. As we do this in a worthy manner, unto the Lord. Amen. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Thank you, Amen. See if the senior pastor will hand back to. Praise God. Thank you, Archbishop, for the powerful word. And for Bishop Fring Pong, it's Valentine's Day tomorrow. <laughs> we do love you. Praise God. If you don't have a Valentine, you can have a Galentine. I've heard they celebrate that in America. So it's your, it's your girlfriends. Praise God that we have a real lover of our soul. And, you know, we make light of these sort of events and times that the world decides to celebrate. But it's, um, it's something that people struggle with, and we need to just be aware of that. Think about those that are on their own. Often at Christmas time, it's the loneliest time. The times that God intends it to be joyous, the world actually distorts it. So we want to thank God. In the Lord always and again I say rejoice. Rejoice in the Lord always and again I say rejoice. Rejoice, rejoice and again I say In the Lord always, then again I say rejoice, rejoice in the Lord always, then again I say rejoice. I've got a river of life flowing out of me, makes the lame to walk and the blind to see, opens, opens prison doors. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with each one of us now and forevermore. And surely goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives, and we will dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever and ever. Let's give the Lord a mighty clap of praise.